thank the uh, organizers for um, asking for an oral presentation of our abstract. And I want to point out that this is the work of uh, senior scientists at our institute, Dr. Christina Yao, who was unable to attend. Uh, I do also want to point out that um, this afternoon you'll hear more from uh, Josh Stewart, who uh, co-led the PANCAN analysis. It was the freezing of that data set on over 3,000 samples that enabled this kind of uh, pathway analysis. So most people are familiar with the phosphatidylinositol 3 kinases, a very large family of uh, heterodimers between uh, regulatory subunits, P185, P85 alpha is most commonly known, but there are other four others. And the catalytic unit, the P110 alpha, uh, which is encoded by the PIK3CA gene, which is very commonly mutated in, in human cancers, as you heard. Um, modular domains of this uh, PIK3CA gene are shown here. There's five of them. Um, it's frequently mutated in multiple types of cancers, as I pointed out, but there are hot spot mutations in both the kinase and helical domains that we'll talk about. Uh, these are thought to be early and possibly initiating events in malignancies like breast cancer. There's a notable absence of mutations in the RAS binding domain, RBD, and also within the core catalytic site of the kinase domain, and that's seen across cancers. Now, preclinical evidence, which led to the rationale for doing this study, indicates that PIK3CA mutations are activating and gain a function, but domain-specific mutations may have different downstream effects, in particular uh, phosphorylation and activation of AKT and other downstream pathways, including mTOR, um, include, and also phenotypic consequences. But these are preclinical studies in model systems. So the TCGA pan cancer data set is big enough to offer an opportunity to ask questions about possible pathway differences linked to domain-specific PIK3CA mutations in different tumor types. Are there common domain-specific pathway activities across the different tumors, or are these cancer type specific? So in terms of pathways, we're going to use an algorithm known as Paradigm that's been used in most of the marker papers of TCGA. Um, briefly, uh, this integrates uh, RNA gene expression data with DNA copy number data, superimposes the, uh, this on a super pathway uh, to infer activities which we refer to as uh, inferred pathway links, or IPLs, and encompassing over 13,000 pathway features, which can be displayed in a heat map or analyzed for differences between tumor subsets. Now, the PANCAN data set characteristics that were used here, and these were the freeze frozen data sets employing the platforms, uh, including uh, exon sequencing, uh, RNA expression, and uh, DNA copy number. We had over 3,500 samples that had the paradigm analysis, in other words, that we had IPL values. We had over 3,200 samples with exon sequencing data, so we have an overlap set shown in the VEM diagram of 2,600. 37 with both IPL and uh, PIK3CA mutation data. As you can see in the PANCAN uh, uh, histograms here that the cancer type distribution among the valuable samples is, is very different. Uh, that's actually reflected a lot in, in the overall TCGA um, accrual of these samples. So that's going to have to be taken into account. Now, somatic PIK3CA, PIK3CA mutations um, have an overall mutation frequency in this PANCAN data set of 22 percent. That's 572 out of the 2637 cases. Um, but the frequency per tumor type is quite variable, as you can see from 0 percent, uh, as seen in AMLs, leukemia, to greater than 50 percent, as seen in uterine endometrial cancer, with the intermediate uh, values as shown there. Now, in order to look at domain-specific mutations, we uh, also uh, filtered so that we would use only nonsense mutations because we we're interested in encoding 
gain of function abnormalities, and also mutations that occurred in only one domain. As you can see, uh, in a, a, nearly 100 of the cases, there were uh, multiple mutations across PIK3CA. So we ended up with a set of 447 uh, cases that we could evaluate, and you can see we eliminating the AML, we have a, a very different, again, we have an uneven distribution across the tumor types that's going to have to be accounted for. The domain-specific PIK3CA mutations are shown here. Um, as you can see, there's a, um, a preference for the helical and kinase domains, and you can see also the hot spots, uh, in particular specific mutations, histidine to arginine at 1047 in the kinase domain, uh, glutamate to uh, lysine at 545 and at 542. So uh, the helical domain has two nearly adjacent hotspots, and the kinase domain has a very common uh, hotspot at one spot. Um, so 83% of the cases had either helical or kinase domain mutations, and 64% of these were at either of these three hotspots uh, as shown. So the domain distribution of the mutations by cancer type was significantly different, color-coded here. The helical uh, domain is in orange, and the kinase domain is in red, and that's most common as shown, um, and across the different tumor types. And as an example, again, of this variation, um, we see in breast cancer seems to prefer kinase domain mutations, with 52 percent of those being in the kinase domain, whereas in squamous cell of the head and neck and lung, uh, there's a preference for helical domain mutations, 65 percent of those being in that domain and only uh, about 20 percent in the kinase domain. So how did we look at pathway activation um, uh, and CUP and, and uh, con uh, control for or just for cancer type? Well, we used the IPLs um, and identified significant IPLs for each uh, domain versus all others by logistic regression, and we adjusted for the cancer type with a wall test P.05. The kinase domain ended up having 711 significantly different IPLs, the helical domain over 1,000, um, and amazingly, these did not overlap much. There were actually 1,500 uh, that were non-overlapping IPL features between the two kinase and helical domains. We then determined in uh, pathway enrichment among the different IPLs with an FDR corrected E-score, and we visualized by cytoscape. So as a kind of proof of consequence, we first went through to the PI3 complex itself, and here you see a color coding that indicates um, if it's very dark red, this is a kinase domain positive association and a reciprocal helical domain negative uh, relationship. And if you have uh, lighter shades of red increasing the pink, this is again kinase domain positive, blue is more helical domain positive or uh, kinase domain negative for green. But here what you see is in the PI3 kinase catalytic subunit itself in the center here where it's the red uh, areas that the kinase domain mutations most strongly associate with the superpathway hub showing the PI3K catalytic subunit activation. And this hub is negatively associated with the helical domain mutations. And this is, in fact, consistent with the preclinical evidence, which is why we looked, looked to that to begin with. But then asking what was distinguishing the kinase domain mutations from the helical domain mutations in, in other areas, uh, we first turned to um, cell cycle and proliferation activities, and these were featured by the polylite kinase 1 and FOXM1 hubs, which were most strongly associated with kinase domain mutations. You can see red and pink virtually everywhere, um, and negatively associated with helical domain mutations, using the same color coding as before. And then if we go to um, helical domain mutations, we see very different. We see the rho GTPase families and also gap junction degradation as hubs and uh, pathway enrichments that were most strongly associated with the helical domain mutations and negatively associated with kinase domain mutations. So although there's these are common across different cancer types in the TCGA pan-cancer data set. 
Uh, missense pic 3 ca mutations distribute very differently with respect to total mutation frequency and domain specificity. Uh, examples being breast cancer with greater than 50 percent in the kinase mutants, whereas uh, squamous cell, head and neck and lung, less than 25 percent and uh, opposite sort of relationships with regard to the helical uh, domain mutations. The kinase domain mutations appear to be linked more strongly with pathway features like FOXM1 and polylike kinase 1 that enable cell proliferation, while the helical domain mutations are uh, appear to be linked more strongly with features enabling cell migration and dissemination, such as the road GTPases. Now, functional studies are clearly needed to confirm these findings, including the suggestion that breast cancers prefer preferentially mutate PIK3CA to drive cell proliferation, while lung and head and neck squamous cancers prefer to helical domain mutations potentially to drive their malignant cell motility. Um, but additional comparisons are also needed here to identify potential tumor type specific or context dependent differences between the kinase and helical domain pathway preferences because as we've begun now to do the functional studies, we then commit ourselves to a particular tumor type, uh, in fact, working with the Hopkins group that has made isogenic lines in the mammary cell line M MCF10A for these different mutants. We need to know what context specific differences there are between the helical and kinase domain mutations as well as general differences across the entire PANCAN data set as I've shown you today. So I'd like to thank our uh, UC Santa Cruz and Buck Institute GDAC uh, team members, um, again, Christina Yao, who did all this work, uh, our partners at 5.3, who developed the uh, paradigm and uh, performed that for us, and then also um, a point again to this afternoon's session where I think you'll hear more about the PANCANCER 12 analysis working group and the subtype uh, data that's uh, in press. Thank you very much. I'll take questions. So we have time for a few questions. Yes. Did you see possibly a huge difference in the CR, uh, CR1, the numerical CR, uh, CR3R1? And did you see the mutation in the record with something else? Is that mutation maybe the helicase uh, domain or kind of domain? P85 alpha? Is that the yeah, regulatory? I guess I'm trying to understand it myself, but I think the question is, do we, did we see any mutations in the regulatory subunit, which would be P85 alpha? We did not look specifically for it, but I do not believe many were reported, if any at all. Maybe I, stank, I could be corrected by that for someone in the audience that might know better. So the, uh, the other interesting aspect... Ah, okay. That's the P85, that's the P85? Yeah, uh, <laughs> there, we did not specifically look at that, but that's an interesting aspect because these mutations that are outside the kinase domain are felt to alter the dependency on that regulatory subunit. So when you look at the helical domain and kinase domain mutation and infer their functions, for those low frequency mutations, those could be bystanders or passenger mutation, have you then go back to use those low frequency mutation in the kinase domain or in the helical domain and look at whether they still carry the same signature? We didn't. We didn't be be because most of the time it's highly, yeah. the hotspot mutations, you skew everything that you're seeing. Uh, I mean, the hotspot mutation of the kinase, hotspot mutation of the helical domain, they are so predominant. And so the signature you're seeing right. could mainly from them. I'm wondering, in, besides doing all the functional studies of the individual mutations, can you take the individual mutation and go back to see whether they actually carry the same signature? I can infer whether they actually have the functional. Uh, we, we could do that. We didn't specifically do that, no. I have a question. So we usually see mutations, some mutations that are co-current pattern or mutually exclusive. So have you checked the, this co-current or mutually exclusive pattern for patient kinase different across different cancer? No, we didn't. 
we only looked for the, no, we didn't control for anything that was concurrent or uh, mutually exclusive with regard to PIK3CA mutations. We only looked at that question most broadly. Thank you. Okay. So let us move on. So now we move to the, our last speaker, um, Dr. Su Yuan Zheng from the University of Texas um, MD Anderson Cancer Center. He will talk about comprehensive molecular profiling of at, um, adorectal carcinoma. Um, so this is the last talk, hopefully serve as an appetizer for our lunch. <laughs> 